Turn with me this morning, if you will, to John chapter 17. John chapter 17 and verse 4, Jesus says, I have glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work you have given me to do. This is the definition and example of finishing well. Yes. Would you agree with that? Yes. Can we say the same thing? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the beauty of this day and for the opportunity and the freedom that we have to come together and worship you. God, we give you praise and we give you thanks today. And we pray now that as we spend time looking at your word this morning, that it would just be a continuation of what you've already begun this morning. Father, that you would be glorified. I thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be able to minister to your people today. And I pray that I might be a blessing to each one. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Jesus is our example of finishing well. And we can look at that and, and determine in ourselves that we each want to be able to say, Father, I have glorified your name. I've done the work that you sent me to do. And we're going to look at some examples of that this morning throughout Scripture. One in particular is a man named Caleb. Some of you all will remember the story of, of Caleb, as he was one of the 12 that God chose to go on a reconnaissance mission in Canaan. They went into Canaan and they searched out the land and they came back. All 12 came back with the same report. It's a beautiful land. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. But 10 were afraid. Mm -hmm. And those 10 were able to influence the hearts of an entire nation to the point that they said, we can't do it. There are giants in the land. Caleb and Joshua stood firm and said, yes, we can. Let's do this thing. But nevertheless, the entire nation of Israel backed away from the promise of God and ended up having to walk in the world for years. Now, can you imagine what it was like for Caleb and Joshua during those 40 years? I mean, they go into a promised land. God gives them a vision, and not just a vision, but a passion to take the land. And for the next 40 years, they've got to look across the Sea of Galilee and see the promise but can't experience it. And they were given a choice. Will they stand firm on the promise or will they buckle under the weight of it? Do you know that there was a great opportunity and a temptation for them to become bitter? And for many of us, when God has given us a promise or a vision of something that he wants to do in our lives and it doesn't happen right away, then we can become weak and doubtful and bitter and angry and even unforgiving. So when you look at this, and we're going to look at jo uh, the book of Joshua, chapter 14 this morning. If you would turn there with me to verse 7. And we see Caleb's conversation with Joshua. This is after they have gone into the land and most of the land has been taken. And Caleb has a conversation with Joshua and starting in verse 7 he says, I was 40 years old when Moses the Lord's servant sent me from Kadesh Barna, Barnea to scout the land and brought back an honest report. I will tell you he brought back a minority report. My brothers who went with me caused the people's hearts to melt with fear, but I remained loyal to the Lord my God. Yes. What a testimony. On that day, 
Moses promised me the land where you have set your foot will be an inheritance to you and your descendants forever because, and look at this, you have remained loyal to the Lord my God. Yes. Caleb's legacy. I remained loyal to the Lord my God. For 40 years, he remained loyal to the Lord his God. And when the time came for Joshua and Caleb to go into the promised land, they were all in. Are you willing to remain loyal to the promise of God for 40 years? How about 20 years? Maybe 10 years? Maybe 10 days. You see, so many times... We want what God has for us, and we want it now. We live in a microwave world. Nobody wants to wait any longer for the oil on the stove to heat up so we can cook popcorn. We want it in three minutes in the microwave. Am I right? There's some guilty people in here this morning. We don't want to wait for the promises of God. We grow weary. We doubt. We forget. We walk away from the promises of God because it doesn't happen in our time. But look at the legacy of Joshua and Caleb. They stood firm on the promise of God. They waited and trusted God. They took God at his word. And they took his word to the bank. Do you all understand what I'm saying? They didn't faint. Feeling, or I'm sorry, finishing well is good for you. Yes. And for those around you. So no matter where you've been or what you've done or how you failed in the past, if you're in Christ, those sins are gone. Amen? Amen? David wrote in Psalms 103, verses 11 and 12, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. So even when we mess up and we fail, his promises are still true. And if we are willing to repent and ask for his forgiveness and stick to the promise that he's given us, he's faithful to perform it. You have the rest of your life to finish well. And so let's look at this morning some of the character traits of Caleb. I'm going to list four character traits here this morning. I'd encourage you to write them down and follow with me. The first character trait that we're going to look at is a focused pursuit. A finisher has a clear eye for the goal. Where do you get vision from? How do you develop intensity? How does your faith grow? We see in Scripture that Caleb's fully devoted fellowship derived straight out of the anchored familiarity with God's Word. He said, I have followed you fully. Caleb was 85 years old when he shouted, Give me the hill country. Don't give me the easy task. Let me just park here and retire and just take it easy. He's 85 years old. He says, I'm as strong now as I was when I went and scouted out the land before. And now I'm ready. Give me the high country. Give me the hill country. What was he asking for? He was asking for the land of Anakim. Not Star Wars. <laughs> Anakim was the ancestors of Goliath. These are the giants in the land. 
And here's Caleb saying, give me the hill country. <laughs> Would we be willing to do the same? Caleb was simply taking God at his word. It was Caleb's intention to be a doer of the word, just as we read in James, no matter what. Caleb knew God's word well enough to apply it correctly and put it to work in his life. There is a consistency in the things that you hear from Pastor James and Pastor Roy and myself. And that is over and over again we tell you, you've got to know what God's Word says mm -hmm. for yourself. Mm -hmm. If you and I are going to finish well, we're going to have to focus in the same way as Caleb. Mm -hmm. Lack of focus produces confusion and uncertainty. A focused pursuit, a focused pursuit produces character you can count on. Mm -hmm. And just for a minute, I want to speak to the men in this room. This is the word to you. As leaders of your home, you are to have a focused pursuit and your family will follow. Amen. You are called to lead. And we, just like Caleb, need to go deep. Yes. At the core of Christian growth is a focused pursuit of God's Word. Peter tells us in 1 Peter 2, 2, he said, Like newborn babes long for the pure milk of the Word. We have to pursue the truth of God's Word in order to apply it to our lives. Trait number two. An undivided heart. To be a finisher requires a strong heart. An undivided heart. You might call it single-mindedness. Again, look at Joshua chapter 4. I'm sorry, chapter 14 and verse 7. He says, I was 40 years old when Moses the, servant, the Lord's servant sent me Kadesh Barnea. To scout the land, I brought back an honest report. Caleb points out that for four decades, that four decades earlier, he was running recon into the promised land under Moses' orders. Caleb insists he made the minority report. He says, as it was in my heart. So we see that he had an undivided heart. It was sealed in his chest. It was a matter of his deepest conviction. Look at James chapter 1. Hold your finger there in Joshua. But look over at James chapter 1. Look at verse 6. Starting in verse 6, it says, But let him ask in faith without doubting, for the doubter is like a surging sea driven and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive some things from the God. It doesn't say that, does it? What's it say? Come on, what's it say? It says he should not receive anything of the Lord. An indecisive man is unstable in all of his ways. The focused pursuit of God's word had produced a heart that was settled. Undivided. Caleb followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. The other ten couldn't follow wholeheartedly because they had a divided heart. 
They were doubtful. Caleb and I might say that every growing Christian should be unsatisfied or dissatisfied with the status quo. Yes. God is not calling us just to get by and to be pushed around and to settle for. He's calling us to step up. There has to be a longing for something more than just a comfortable lifestyle. At this point, in the possession of the land, Caleb could have said, you know, we took that pretty piece of land over there and I'll just go settle over there. But he didn't. He said, give me the high country. Give me the tough task. In Acts 20, verse 24, we read where Paul says, But I do not consider my life of any account as dear to myself, so that I may finish my course. And the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus, to testify solemnly of the gospel of the grace of God. What is the ministry that God has called you to? We are not spectators, folks. That's right. We are participants. And God has a call and a purpose for each one of us. Yes. And if it is that God is calling you to disciple one person, then do it faithfully. Amen. God gives the increase. Paul had a one-track heart. And as I was on the finish line, you and I need to seek the same if we intend to finish well. Mm -hmm. Number three, a driving intensity. To be a finisher requires a fire in the belly and a driving intensity. Call it determination. Mm -hmm. To finish well requires a spiritual work ethic. And the Bible refers to it as endurance. Let's go back to James chapter 1 again. In James chapter 1, starting in verse 2, James tells us, Consider it great joy, my brothers, whenever you experience various trials. Did Caleb have some trials? Yes. Sure he did. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. I would say he got tested. Yes. But endurance must do its complete work so that you may be mature, complete, Lacking nothing. That is God's intention for us, but we've got to have that, that driving intensity that we're talking about, that no matter what the circumstances look like, no matter what bills come in the mail, no matter what happens in relationships, should I keep going? We have that intensity and understanding. God, whatever comes my way, I'm going to endure and I'm going to finish well. Yes. William wrote, excuse me, William Ward wrote, I will do more than belong. I will participate. I will do more than care. I will help. I will do more than believe, I will practice. I will dream, I will work. I will do more than give, I will serve. I will do more than live, I will grow. I will do more than be friendly, I will be a friend. 
The driving intensity causes us to rise above the status quo. That growing intensity is a fire within us that sees the vision and holds on to the vision and is going to the vision without doubt. Number four, a certain confidence. You might call it biblical optimism. Amen. Mm-hmm. You might call it faith. <laughs> what we see here is that Caleb's confidence was not in himself. His confidence is in God and his word. Look at verse 12 again in, in Joshua chapter 14. Verse 12, he says, Now give me the hill country the land promised me on that day, because you heard then that the Anakim were there, as well as the large fortified cities. And then this is what he says. Perhaps the Lord will be with me, and I will drive them out as the Lord promised. His confidence was in God. When God gives us a vision and a passion, we must remember it's up to him. I could tell you from personal experience when I tried to take it on myself to accomplish the things that God wanted to accomplish, I generally mess it up. Because it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about our confidence in him and him working in us and through us to accomplish his good will. Are you all catching this? Amen. We have to have confidence in the Lord. Caleb understood something. He was simply God's servant. He didn't have all the answers. He didn't know all the details. But he does know God himself. And he does know the truth of his word. Caleb acknowledged and fully recognized the task. Apart from God's involvement. But, good old Caleb was a biblical optimist. Cling to faith shaped by the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Years ago I read a book by Steve Farrar entitled Finishing Strong and I've never forgot the things that I read in that book, certain things that, that applied to my life. In the book he says, in the Christian life, it's not how you start that matters, it's how you finish. It's not how you begin, but how you end. He told the story in that book that years ago there were three uh, evangelists that came on the scene about the same time. Two of them went on like gangbusters, filling stadiums and people were coming to them in droves and they were told and written up about that they were, they were the next Babe Ruth of evangelism. Two of those three, one ended up denying the deity of Christ, the other one died as an alcoholic in a, in a gutter. The other one finished strong. His name was Billy Graham. All right. We all know his story. We all know how he was faithful to complete the task that God had given him. He had a passion that was burning in his heart. And he continually looked for God's hand and what God wanted him to do. And we see how God prospered and blessed him. Yes. 
I would dare say that more people have come to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ through the ministry of Billy Graham than any other ministry I've ever heard of. Because he had a vision. He was determined to finish well. When I read that book, he asked the question, what are you willing to do in order that when the day comes, and we will all stand before God in, at one point or another, right? Yes. But what are you willing to do that when that day comes that you can stand before him and hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into my rest? Or are you willing to hear him say, good enough? There should be a resounding no in each one of our hearts today. I don't want to hear good enough. I don't want to hear, okay, Mike, you made it. Or worse yet, that he would say, you made it by the skin of your teeth. Guess we'll let you in. Huh? Guess we'll let you in. <laughs> yeah. No, it's about hearing him say, well done, Mike. Good job, Mike. You finished the task. You finished well. That's what I want to hear. Amen. Amen. And I made the decision years ago that I would do anything that I have to do in order to finish well. In order to hear him say, well done. One of the things that God showed me after that was that I had to have some men in my life yes. that would stand with me and encourage me and hold me accountable. Mm -hmm. And I can say that I am where I am today because I have those kind of men in my life. Haven't done it all right, made a lot of mistakes, but I am determined to finish well. How about you? Amen. Jesus, Caleb, and Paul are just three examples of finishers. Hebrews 12, sometimes called the Hall of Faith, lists many examples given to us that we can finish well. If we will spend time in God's Word, and apply it to our lives, then we too can finish well. There is not a person in this room that can't finish well. Amen. But the first thing that has to happen is that you have to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus as Lord of your life, then you are not going to finish well. And I encourage you that if you're here today and you have not made that decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life, don't let another minute go by. Amen. Determine today to give him complete control of your life. And you and I, just like Caleb, can finish well. Yes. Amen. Amen? Amen? Are there any questions or thoughts concerning this? Caleb was the one that said, um, choose you this day when you are going to serve him. As for me and my house, that was Joshua said. Man, Joshua I, said. We will serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. They made a decision. Yes. That's right. Yes. And I don't think that Joshua waited to consult a committee before he made that decision. Yes. It was in his heart. It's in my heart. Yes. Me and my house will serve the Lord. Amen. Anybody else? Let's pray together. Yes. Lord God, we thank you for the vision that you have given us that one day, Lord, we will walk from this place into your presence. Yes. We will experience your glory. And it is our desire, Lord God, that we would each finish well. Yes. I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. I thank you, God, that you are at work in each one of our lives, whether we realize it or not. And Lord, that we would grab a hold of the truth of your word. Yes. That we would each one finish well. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.